Burnt out windows, collapsed roof, walls pop marked with bullets, debris in empty rooms is what a gun battle leaves behind. This is not the tale of one single family, but hundreds of families are facing such challenges in this harsh winter. The frequent gun battles in Kashmir between Indian forces and militants have left a trial of destruction. According to Jammu and Kashmir Coalition for Civil Society, a body that basically documenting the rights violations in Kashmir, 120 houses have been destroyed during various gun battles between Indian force and militants in 2018 in Kashmir Valley. How do you see this trend of burning down houses the militant have a pistol in possession? Well, as a humble student of law, I must say that this is in flagrant violation of the laws of armed conflict. Uh, the, one of the basic uh, principles of armed conflict, laws of armed conflict, is that there has to be a principle of proportionality. That is, there should not be an excessive use of force or armed uh, forces. Uh, when we see these uh, houses being gutted down or these militants being killed, we see day in and day out that the Indian military forces are resorting to excessive use of forces. Uh, another thing to this is that they cannot use unlimited force, which is also prohibited both under the domestic, inter uh, domestic law of India as well as the international law of armed conflict. Is there any sort of compensation? If yes, then the process of, uh, obviously the process of compensation is very hectic. Uh, how can law improve the process? Well, uh, so far as uh, my limited knowledge is concerned, I have not seen anybody who gets a compensation when his house is uh, gutted down. Uh, we, can, we have cases wherein a person disappears and after five years his family is given rupees one lakh. So you can presume where a human life is one lakh rupees for the state and you can assume what kind of compensation uh, will they provide to these uh, families. People who have their home uh, houses destroyed, they are not always one with militant. They may be afraid, but uh, uh, why do they suffer for it? Yes, that's the point. That's exactly what the point is that uh, for no for uh, for no fault of their own their houses are gutted and they they become homeless and with the result they have to suffer immensely most of the i have seen personally most of these families are poor and then they are not given any compensation and in some of the cases uh, fir's are lodged against these families for harboring militants and they are you know, uh, some of the when some of the civilians are also killed, but so far as these families are concerned, I can say that they afterwards die slow death. It's very difficult for them to rebuild those uh, homes. Uh, when a citizen is not provided security by the law, who will he go to? Well, that's what the nature of Kashmir conflict is. That here. Uh, in most of the other cases, we have the government which provides the security, but here in the case, we, it's the state which is the perpetrator and that's why it becomes even a bigger thing to seek justice from the same state mechanism which is, uh, which is the perpetrator in these type of cases. Uh, so, do you think that Indian law is not taking care of Geneva Conventions? Not at all. See, even if this, uh, even if the Kashmir conflict is not termed as an international armed conflict, even if it's termed as a non-international armed conflict, the Indian state has still to respect the laws which are which govern the armed conflict. And as I told you earlier, we have the principles of proportionality, the principle of precaution, the principle of limitation, which which say which basically say that the state cannot use excessive force. The state has to respect the civilians who are not involved in no way involved with the militants. And uh, in that case, we can say that the Indian state has failed the international law in Kashmir. However, the bloodshed and destruction continues unabated in the valley. And sadly, there seems no light at the end of the tunnel for the people of Kashmir. Bashar Tamin for Kashmir Unheard from Shopian.